So Apple introduced Apple Silicon to replace their Intel processors, but what does this actually mean? And what did Apple forget to mention? In this video, we're gonna talk about the potential issues and changes due to these new chips. Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. Now, Intel has just been dropped by Apple, meaning in two years, we won't be talking about i5s or i7s in Macs anymore. But Intel actually enabled certain technologies like running Windows on a Mac and Thunderbolt. Like when the iPhone changed the landscape of phones, Apple Silicon will change the landscape of computers and businesses. Everyone is talking about what performance this will bring to the new Macs, but I haven't seen anyone talking about what technologies we might be missing. So your first question might be, will my Intel programs run on my new Apple Silicon Mac? Yes and no. So Apple introduced Universal 2, which means that app developers can update their programs to run natively on Apple Silicon and Intel within just a few days. Apple also introduced Rosetta 2, which translates existing Apple applications, which hasn't been updated to run on these new Apple Silicon uh, chips, but this won't run as well as if they recompiled using Universal 2. There are also some reports from developers saying that there are limitations and some instructions that cannot be translated using Rosetta 2. To help developers, Apple introduced development kits. The development kits have the iPad Pro chips inside the body of the Mac Mini, but I saw something very interesting. There was no Thunderbolt 3 support Port, which Apple introduced in their Macs in 2016. This is because Thunderbolt 3 technology is actually Intel's technology, but I think we will obviously be seeing the end of Thunderbolt 3 in Macs. So what will Apple use instead? Because USB 3.2 Gen 2 only supports up to 20 gigabytes and Thunderbolt 3 supports 40 gigabytes. Well, USB 4 is meant to have the same speeds and is backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3. So even though we won't see any sort of speed improvements with USB 4, at least we aren't going backwards. Also, reports suggest that we should be seeing USB 4 devices in late 2020 to late 2021, which kind of lines up with Apple's first Apple Silicon uh, product launches. We also see 16 gigabytes of RAM in these development kits. It's kind of interesting that they didn't include eight gigabytes because obviously a lot of Macs at the moment run eight gigabytes as standard. So does this mean that we might see a shift to 16 gigabytes as standard across all Macs, especially because maybe these ARM processors require a little bit more RAM? Who knows? With Apple Silicon being based on Apple's experience in creating ARM chips for their iPhones and iPads, for example, Apple has got their processors down to only five millimeters, which if we take a look at the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which has the 10th generation Intel processor, this is still running 14 nanometer process, which is kind of old technology at this point, even with Intel's refinements over the years. Intel has had some serious issues over the past few years, and this has allowed AMD to make faster and cheaper CPUs that outperform Intel. And Apple's chips have nearly been doing the same thing on ARM side. And this year with the latest Intel-based Macs, a lot of consumers have been expecting either better performance or better cooling. And they just haven't been seeing that type of performance and better cooling. The iPad Pro is a very interesting example of Apple's own chips, because if we compare the raw power using Geekbench 5, the iPad Pro beats the MacBook Air and the base MacBook Pro. And when you edit 4K footage using LumaFusion on the iPad Pro and editing 4K with Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Pro base model, the export time is about 20 to 25% faster on the iPad than the base MacBook Pro, which is just crazy because the iPad Pro has no fans, is a thinner design and is cheaper. Just imagine a faster chip with active cooling and a better GPU performance. This is just gonna be a crazy machine in a MacBook Pro body or even an iMac Pro body. As a Mac user, I've used a lot of plugins, for example, with Final Cut Pro, and some of those actually use motion tracking, which has been optimized specifically for Intel chips. And even some other plugins use actually a dedicated GPU or rely on a dedicated GPU, like the ones from, let's say, Pixel Film Studios. Rosetta 2 might help with this, 
but it's not going to run as well as if it was developed natively for these Apple Silicon chips. Now, there are also a lot of users that run programs like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro and After Effects, which again have been optimized for Intel Macs. And with those programs, there are also a whole load of plugins that they use with them. So how are they going to perform? I mean, we have seen demos with Photoshop and Lightroom, but can I just point you back to when Adobe launched Photoshop for the iPad and how many people complained about it because it was missing actually so many features. I mean, how do we know that we're gonna be getting full fat versions of these programs when they're ported over to ARM? Will we be getting bits and bobs first and then with more time, will we see all the features roll out? And how long will that take if that's the case? I don't mean to put a downer on all of this, but we've seen big promises before and Apple has under-delivered. Even with Final Cut Pro, it's still not optimized for current hardware or even new hardware. For example, like the 5600M that's found on the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. And there's even still problems with Final Cut Pro currently and with other third party like Adobe programs, there's still issues. So now that we're switching to this new chip and new OS, I'm just a bit skeptical that we may run into a lot of issues, especially within the first year or so. Just because I see that we use a lot of these programs for our hobbies and jobs, so it's really important for Apple to get this right, as well as third-party developers. Obviously, I will be sure to test these programs out and let you guys know, just because you know that I love real-world examples. So this is a super exciting time for us as consumers, but it's also confusing. If you are in the market for a new Mac, for example, what should you do? Should you wait for the new ones to come out or should you just buy what's currently out? I think if you can wait, then wait, because there's just too much unknown about these new silicon chips and how programs and other third-party, let's say, plugins will work on these Apple Silicon Macs. Plus, how will they compare to Intel Macs right out of the gate? Apple has obviously spoken about that they're introducing all these new programs and layers and stuff like this, but we won't actually know until day one of the new Apple Silicon Macs. If you need a new Mac right now and you cannot wait, then I wouldn't worry too much as I'm not worried about my current Intel Macs not being supported in the future because of Universal 2, which allows applications to run both on Apple Silicon and Intel Macs. I may even stick with Intel Macs for the next year or two, just due to the fact that some of my workflow and applications and plugins might only work on Intel for now. And I might not have the luxury of waiting for these plugins and stuff like that to work on these new Apple Silicon Macs. I mean, I can't really judge just yet because I don't know the performance of Rosetta 2. But again, like I said, there's just too much unknown. So the certainty of having an Intel Mac might be best for you. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave me a comment down below on what you think. Trust me, my mind has been flipping on this situation. So I really wanna hear your thoughts. Also, check out the links in the description below if you wanna support this channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. Also, check out these fantastic videos that I handcrafted myself if you wanna see more of this face. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.